Hi, welcome to this video. My name's Phil. I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. Now this was kind of one of the first videos I kind of did when I started the channel, but I've decided to do an update on it, also because actually the equation that I had in the original one was kind of the wrong way around, so it seems like a good time to actually do an update on it anyway. So this video will be looking at how we calculate the diameter of our moon. And this actually this kind of method also applies to other things like the sun as well, we can use the same method, provided we know the distance to it and the angular diameter and things like that, we can then calculate the actual diameter of the object in the sky. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find or get the distance to the moon. So we'll call this kind of d, lowercase d, and we need to get this distance. Now there's a few ways you can kind of do that. The, the modern way of doing it is to kind of point a laser at the surface, well it's not actually at the surface of the moon, there's a retro reflector there that was placed by the Apollo missions, there's actually quite a few actually, and you basically aim the laser and you measure the time it takes to go to the moon and then come back. We know how fast light travels, we know the speed of light, so if we can basically time the pulse of the laser there and back, we can basically get the distance essentially. And there's one of the examples actually. So that's the Apollo Lunar Laser Ranging Retro Reflector. And it's kind of one of five. And that's where it is. You obviously can't see it that well particularly, but it is there. There's a few of those actually on the surface of the moon, which we use to essentially point a laser at and measure the time it takes to go there and back essentially. Now, if we do that, we get an average distance of around about 384 1,399 um, kilometers. Now, I say average distance. The moon's actually on an elliptical orbit. It's not circular. So what that means is as it goes around the Earth, it gets closer to Earth and it gets further away. So we have to take the average of that. So that would essentially kind of be closer to its semi-major axis. And also, because we know this distance and we keep measuring it, we have been measuring it for about 50 so years, even longer we have found that the moon is actually moving away. And it's moving away from the Earth on average about 3.8 centimetres per year. Um, and that's kind of to do with the interaction of the tides and the spin of Earth and things like that. But that's a completely different story, a different video entirely. But anyway, the average distance right now is 384,399 kilometres, basically. So we've got the distance there. That's the modern way of doing it by measuring the laser time there and back. The other way that would have been done more historically or in the past is kind of using lunar parallax. So parallax is where you look at an object and over either in different locations, well it will be in different locations, the background stars appear to be in a different location and then you have this parallax angle. So with regards to the Earth, if we take a measurement or we look at the moon from different locations, maybe we take it from the North Pole or the South Pole, then the background stars will appear to be different despite it being taken at the same time. So it appears to be in a slightly different location. So yeah, it basically just appears to move against the background stars. And we have this parallax angle then which we can then measure because we can measure the angle that is kind of deflecting or appears to be different. The closer that it is um, and further away, then obviously the angle is going to change. So we can basically get the distance that way. And the equation to do that is here. So the distance for, again, this is for small angles. So D, your distance, is then approximately equal to the, the distance between the two observations. So if we're doing this for, for this particular setup here, we've got L, which is our distance between two observers. And that would then give us a parallax angle P. And I've just called this L, you could call it anything really. This is just the distance between the two observations. We've got our distance to the object and then we've got our parallax angle. So we get an approximate distance that way. And it only, well, it doesn't only work, but for small angles, it can be approximated like this here. And actually we do this the same sort of method to get the diameter of the moon. So now that we've got the distance to the moon, we can then measure the angular diameter of the moon. And that's the angular size on the sky. Now, the closer it is, then it's going to have a larger angular diameter. The further away, it will be smaller. So that gives its angular size, not its actual size. But if we do know its distance, we can then actually convert that to an actual proper linear size. Now, again, because the moon is moving away 
from the Earth and towards it on its elliptical orbit, its angular diameter does change during the course of its orbit. And that's, well, this is kind of what gives rise to things like our supermoons or micromoons, and it appears slightly bigger or smaller in the sky, and that's because it's on this elliptical orbit. But if we do the same thing we did for the distance, and we calculate the average angular diameter, it's around about half a degree, it's angular diameter on the sky. So now we've got a distance, we've got an angular diameter, we can now calculate the actual diameter to the moon. So then again, for small angles, we can use this equation here where theta is your angular diameter is approximately equal to the diameter of the moon divided by the distance. So we could basically rearrange that for distance and then we'd quite easily be able to calculate the actual diameter of the moon. So this is one way you can do the diameter of the moon, but you can also apply exactly the same method to the sun or other objects as well. And again, the, the modern methods are using these lasers and looking for the, the, the time it takes for pulses to come back. But there are other ways like the parallaxes and things like that that you can use that would have been used more historically to get the distance. Now, if we do that, you get a dis or not a distance, you get a diameter of the moon of just under three and a half thousand kilometers. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy the videos, then do consider becoming a member. There's extra videos in the member section, but it also helps support the channel as well. So thank you for watching.